Hello again, Necron fans! This is a another exhibition match. Another exhibition match on Tomb of Heroes between Cronabern and J Raccoon. Cronabern at the west side of the map playing CISO, J Raccoon at the east side of the map playing CISO as well. Interesting. Though Cronabern apparently regrets having chosen CISO. That might have been a mistake. And we're also on assassin mode, so we have the Acrons here. Probably gonna be used for scouting, and as usual, will be the target of getting killed for most of the game, since that's the point of the game, is to kill them. Though, usually I found that Acron games actually don't usually end with killing the Acron, they usually end with destroying everything else, because really, everything else is also a victory condition. Like the Acron, if the Acron is the only thing alive, you don't, you still lose. But, it's there. It's still a target. It has, it has meant the winning of games. And it looks like J. Raccoon is definitely going for a scout with his Akron, whereas Cronabern is not. Cronabern is scouting with his infantry instead. Possibly forgetting his Akron. No, he is keeping the Akron, but scouting with everything. Interesting. Not sure why. But apparently deciding that it's worth it to scout with everything. I personally would send off one of the Marines over to the corner somewhere, over to one of the expansions, just to prep. But that's... Maybe I'm thinking in terms of old economy, because that's what you do in old economy. And in the current economy, I haven't really played C so much. But even then, I mean, prepping for it, because the Marine isn't going to be doing too much in the main base with the defenses. And... Oh, here we go. So the Marine and Special Ops are attacking the Akron that Jericho is sending. And this is why you might want to keep it in the base rather than trying to explore with it. But if you're going to... I'm saying, if you're going to move the Marine out of the base, you might as well move it to a place where it's going to be there to expand, like, I guess the 7 or 8 Minimark. Although in Tomb of Heroes, you could expand actually pretty quickly and get away with it. Just because you're expansion, especially if it's over in the corner, is not going to be spotted very quickly, and this map is large enough that rushes are not going to happen very much, so you can go for economy with a bit more emphasis than you would on, say, Cataclysm Ridge, which is a small enough map that rushes just destroy everything. And there goes the importer, so Jericoon getting up his importer, getting up 4 RPs. A bit surprised he didn't wait for 5 or 6 RPs first, but he might be going for a slightly faster build, might be focusing a bit on getting himself a bit of an early aggression. Hard to tell, though. This map is large enough that you don't really need to do that. Anyway, a couple of Marines here for Cron Abern. He has apparently apparently built an additional Marine. Yeah, from the looks of it, he has built an additional Marine to defend against this Acron. Oh, to get this Acron out of the way. To push it away. Jericho, of course, can just be echoing that out. He's not going to leave it to die. No reason to do that. But he is actually changing the way it goes through, so it avoids getting hit by the infantry in the first place. And... Crown Abbott not seeing this. Crown Abbott about 30 seconds up from here, so he's not going to be able to see what's going on. I mean, he must think he's... Actually, must might realize it now since he's not intercepting it anymore. But he does also see what Jericoon is up to, and really both players are doing the exact same thing. So Jericoon losing his Akron right now. So Jericoon actually cannot really do any orders past where Crown is propagating. Actually, now it's Red Time Wave is carrying that, so at this point, Jericoon is a little bit limited in what he can do. Though he's likely to move this Akron back before it actually outright dies, but he might be aware that it has outright died. A second Akron coming up, sorry, a second importer coming up for Cron Aberrant. So he's really focused on inf infantry destruction. Interesting. I mean, I'm not, I'm not begrudging him on that one because, as like mentioned before, I do like to see more infantry being used because it's a variety and strategy. But on the other hand, building two importers is kind of committing to that to an extent. While Jericoon focused very heavily on getting through this here, and Jericoon actually losing... Is he losing his Akron again? Well, it's further in the future, that's the 301 mark. So yes, he is losing his Akron again, but he isn't going to be likely too worried about it, because if we see from his point of view, at the 2-minute mark, he actually jumped away from that. But at the 2-minute mark, he can't actually command anything here, his Akron is dead at this point. So he needs to go back and save this thing, realizing that it has died, and now losing all ability to command anything. From his point of view, this is just a blank screen saying that he can't command anything. But it looks like he's... Where is he keeping that Akron? He is actually retreating with it, moving it home, it taking barely any damage before that happens, and the Special Op here will be able to... Actually, Special Ops and Marine here will be able to defend against the incoming Special Op and Marine from Crown Aberrant. Thus protecting the Akron successfully. Oh, actually, no, they won't! The two, they came in one at a time, so this is going to be rather difficult. Jericho not in a good position, but he does have Defender's Advantage. He can just build up inventory to get away from this. However, Cronhammer getting a factory up as well, and Jericoon, he does have the money for a factory. He should be building one now, if not sooner. He should be building one about here. About the 218 mark? I think he can afford it. Actually, maybe not. No, looking at the graph, at the 3 minute mark. 
definitely can afford it there. But here we have the Marine is actually dealing some meaningful damage. Jerakun building up another special ops, however, will be able to take care of that. But the Akron still being weakened. Well, Crown Amaran just manages to escape with his, getting it out of the way. Avoiding getting hit by his... Actually, no, he's moving it back in. He might be trying to use it as a decoy to keep the infantry from attacking his own infantry. So his infantry can just deal damage. And it's not working, though. But it is still scouting out, and these infantry are dying. So... Wow, actually, the Marine now at full health. Crown Aberrant even better off in this iteration. But another infantry will be coming up shortly, I'm sure. And yes, very quickly, a special op is coming up. So this Akron is basically just being used for scouting, not at all for decoy. And once this special ops comes up, then it'll be over. There we go, special op is up, and the Marine is going to die now. At the same time, J Raccoon is... Actually, J Raccoon's point of view. He is prepped to attack himself, but hit... He's really not in a good position to do it. I mean, yeah, he could deal some damage here, but the factory coming up is because you're going to get HHCs. Crime is going to get HHCs and defend against this. It's not going to be a problem. Whereas with... Wow, Crime are actually managing to get away from this... Getting in a better position, getting... Oh, it looks like one of the Marines is out of position at, the, at that particular iteration. So J Raccoon managing to defend against this, ultimately getting his Akron saved, which... Actually, that was kind of unfortunate. Kramer didn't notice that because Kramer could have turned that around. This Marine being out of position, not really focused on attacking, would have been very vulnerable, and the Special Ops would have died. And then at that point, it would have been just open. But it looks like proxy being built. Okay, this is where Jericho is going with this. Getting a proxy, two importers, and a factory. Very likely to start building a lot of... I'm actually not sure what. Getting ground units very quickly. He might be building a mech and then going from there to Macrofab, getting Twinmar proxy. And that is extremely scary. So if he does that, that will be very interesting to see. But I think... I think he might be going for something different. He is getting more RPs. No, actually, given... Yeah, it looks like he is going for a more proxy. When he's going to get a mech, I don't know. But he's... Well, no, actually, if he was trying to get a mech, he would have right now. He doesn't have enough Q-plasma to build it. So he appears to be going for ATHCs at first. And this is the 5-minute mark, so this is rather late for ATHC rush. But Twinmar proxy would be insane. Now, Lancer coming up from Crown Aberrant. Crown Aberrant definitely seeing what's going on. And able to deal with this, jumping back to when he is at the 441 mark. He doesn't appear to be changing up too much. No, he's keeping the Lancer in there, getting his infantry over and taking care of this proxy very quickly. He's taking care of one of the importers, and this Lancer, after having done his job of scouting what's going on, moving back, getting away from the Special Ops, and helping destroy the importer. This factory going down very quickly too, so Jericoon's proxy is going down. Jericoon, however, jumping back as well, not able to stop anything, but he could build the ATHCs right... No, he can't build the ATHCs right now. He could build a mech right now, it's the only thing he can build. It would help with the Lancer, but that's about it. Losing this proxy very quickly. So Jericoon's early harassment not doing any real damage. And this Lancer has gone off here, just... Looks like he's trying to take care of the Akron. And yeah, it is indeed getting in a position to do that. The Special Ops, however, does spot it out beforehand, and it's going to take it out. So that Lancer really taking the wrong route in. Just barely getting spotted, although admittedly the Special Ops would have spotted it anyway. The, res the resource processors would have seen it. But still, that Lancer, not really super effective. It should probably be pulled back. Not the most expensive thing in the world, so it's not the biggest deal. It's not like, say, a Vecchio vehicle, where losing it is the biggest thing in the world. No, Lancers are not... are actually expendable. Still, it's not... A good idea to throw units away if you don't have to. But they are expendable. Anyway, Crown Aberrant getting rid of that proxy. Very nicely done. So J. Raccoon is a bit behind now. Having lost his proxy. Having essentially lost everything that he had for dealing with this. But he does have still the money to get more factories up. At least he thinks he does. We'll see when the green time wave comes along. But I don't know if that's going to show he has the money for it. No, it does. Actually, this, this is the construction here. So the green time wave does carry it forward. J. Raccoon is able to recover from this. He does have a strong enough economy. But he's still somewhat behind. However, Crown Aberrant has not taken advantage of his position. He's not built up Macrofabs or any tech. He is building a mech over, so a Macrofab is likely to come up fairly soon. But still, no real tech and no further economy. He could be expanding from here. Jericho could definitely be expanding from when he is. He'd easily be getting more forces, more RPs just around the map. Bit surprised he's not doing so. I'm mean, not surprised he's getting factories and importers. That's a good idea. It's just... I'm a little bit surprised he isn't expanding, but using this money a bit more to get, like, just one or two more RPs every minute or so. That would really bring him forward. And here we go. Machinery is being upgraded, so Crown Aberrant is definitely getting himself up for tech. Getting a Tornade very quickly, and otherwise still not teching up very much. And here we go. That's what I was looking for. The Macrofab being built up. Or almost being built up. Crown Aberrant not quite able to afford it, but looks like he's going back before Machinery's research to afford it. 
Possibly. Nope, not changing that at all. But he does have the... Once his liquid crystal stocks get up to 80, he will be able to afford that macrofab. And then he will have Martanks. Actually, he'll have everything he has, machinery being researched, so he'll ever have everything at his disposal. I'm kind of curious if he's going to go for something like a nuke, or if he's going to go for... Man, what else would he go for? I guess Martanks and Twin Mars would be the best option right now, especially with the amount of infantry that Jericho is building. Not that Crown Aberrant knows this. I mean, these two factors actually have been sitting idle this entire time. While Crown Aberrant is getting his ATCs up, going to be scouting out, going to be seeing what's going on, seeing this note, well, checking the north center expansion, very good idea, but not checking these south expansions, which, while Jericho has not taken them at all, he could definitely do so. A little bit surprising that. Anyway, Jericho getting some infantry moving forward to assault, just double checking Crown Aberrant's expansions, making sure nothing is there, and Crown Aberrant's Tornad is up. Looks like another one might be in production. Is it? No, a Lancer's in production. Well, the Macrofab is halfway done at the 903 mark. And the Trinod going over to help out the ATHCs with their assault with a Lancer as well. Interesting composition. Will be somewhat effective. The ATHCs are going to be really the bulk of the army, though. Tornods, good anti-ground units. Lancers are decent anti-air units before aerospace is researched. So, Crimer does have the bases covered in terms of unit types, but I'm not sure in terms of unit quantity. Another factory being built up with only two armies or two importers. I don't know if this is the best option. I mean, Crimer does have enough reserves in the bank to be able to work with this for at least a little while, but he might want another importer if he really wants to be producing from all three of these production structures at once. While J Raccoon has his own pair of factories getting now production, getting ATCs up, his infantry production seems to have ceased. But the infantry does have our moving forward, still marching forward towards that natural expansion. They should be there by tomorrow. And I'll cover that when it happens. But for now, the HTCs are being built, and they can actually do things in a reasonable amount of time. Now, further HTC is coming in, and these are the HTC we saw before. Crown Aberrant actually looks like he's waiting for the Tornado to get in before moving forward, trying to move in all at once. Crown Aberrant is, see, in his main base, he is ready with his Macrofab. He does have a second factory up. Not building anything with the Macrofab, though. Like I said, not sure if he's going to go for Twin Mars. Heavy Cruiser, maybe. A little bit silly if he did, but he might. Or Blackbirds. Actually, Blackbirds wouldn't be a terrible idea with the army composition he has. But no, it looks like he is instead focused on just this one assault. Trying to get his air units to the back while distracting the ATCs. Not a bad choice, actually, but unfortunately they are getting themselves distracted by other forces. The ATCs coming in here will be able to take care of... No, all these forces will be able to take care of that Tornad. And that Tornad not doing what it really needs to be doing, which is getting rid of the Akron. So, at this point... J Raccoon has his defenses nicely set up, and the Akron moving out of the way. But this means that Crown Aberrant's forces will be assaulting relevant targets, getting rid of one of the importers, getting rid of some of the infantry fairly quickly, but losing a Lancer in the process. And these ATCs are the real threat. But even then, the infantry are getting close enough that it's everything's a real threat. It's going to be quite difficult for Crown Aberrant to get in here. Like I said, I'm not sure what he's planning on doing from here, if he's planning on going over Twin Mars or what, because he is clearly not focusing very heavily on production at this point. He was focusing very heavily on the army he had, while Jericoon has managed to produce enough, but this Tornad still dealing some damage, getting rid of these importers. Jericoon further in the future not noticing this, but that's because it hasn't propagated yet. The Red Timeway bringing it forward, and once he sees that, he might start getting worried, but he is probably not too worried. He's got quite a lot already in production. He's got a lot produced. He doesn't have to worry about anything going on. Nothing in production, mind you, but... Fairly large army going for a counterattack, and this is where Crown needs to be worried. While he is doing meaningful harassment, meaningful harassment falling into the playable pass, by the way. He's. Oh, actually, he's won! Jericoon has thrown in the towel. That is game! I'm actually a little bit surprised there, but I guess Jericoon figured he couldn't save his base? I don't know. Crown actually wasn't in that great of a position, though a couple Twin Mars would have been viable and would have been definitely an option that could have been done. So, it's kind of a toss-up. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and that will be the games for tonight. So, have a good night, everybody.